Good evening and welcome to Merry Weather, an American Epic. My name is Modi Aparandis. This is a first-person RPG where you're playing as Meriwether Lewis leading his expedition to the West. Uh, he, if you're not familiar with American history, uh, President Thomas Jefferson commissioned Lewis and Clark to find the Northwest Passage, which is uh, a route to go from St. Louis to the Pacific Ocean. Uh, and so it is it is treacherous terrain. There's about 3,700 miles to cover through mountains and forests and completely uncharted territory. The only people that have ever been there, uh, I imagine for the most part, would just be the Native Americans that live there. So it, it would be... It's a treacherous thing to do. Tremendous undertaking to get this thing explored and mapped and all that stuff. So it is it is a very interesting historical thing here. This game plays on that as an RPG with uh, your own choices for dialogue and that kind of thing. It's been uh, fact-checked by some historians. It has a very good writer attached to it with the dialogue, and this is pretty awesome. So I'm going to start with this, this is a brand new LP, basically. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this for as long as you guys are interested uh, for at least a few episodes and see what you guys think of it. It's going to be a lot of fun. It is it is just the right kind of goofy, um, and it is also kind of an interesting game, I think, on top of that. So uh, let's get into Meriwether, an American epic. Here we go. Philadelphia, 1803. Oh, I'm in it? This is it. Hold W to walk. Neat. Pay a visit to Dr. Wistar. Hello, Doctor. How fair are you today? Good evening, Dr. Wistar. Thank you so much for inviting me to dinner tonight. Oh, I did not just invite thee to dinner, my friend. I ate some a surprise for thee. Oh? Follow me, thou wilt not believe thine eyes. I'm not believing all the... What do you have here? My friend, what is this? You got a mammoth in your in your, your foyer. Look, Casper. Dr. Whitstar, these are wondrous. Am I not mistaken? Are these woolly mammoth bones? Dr. Wistar is nearly bursting out of his skin with pride. As a proper Quaker, however, he does his best to conceal it. They are. Arrived recently from excavation at Big Bone Lick. Near, really? Really? Near Cincinnati. Bones of the Willie Mammoth are great, the great American incognitum. Incredible! Uh... So we, basically our choices here are going to determine uh, what kind of leader we are for our group here. You are a crusader against incongruence. You will be a great ambassador for science. They're priceless to a natural philosopher. Now let's go science. I mean, I don't really care about that one. I want, I want like, they want science. I think about science. They're priceless to a natural philosopher. <laughs> okay. They surely will be the jewels of your cabinet of curiosities. Scientists and laymen alike will come from four corners of the earth to see these miraculous bones. Please tell that to Elizabeth. She tires of the masks I am always making of our house with these bones and books. Where is Mrs. Wistar? I would love to thank her for having me over. She is presently upstairs with the children and the good Dr. Rush. Dr. Rush is completely smitten by her children, is he not? He is a crusty old scholar and a curmudgeon to boot. But put him in front of a child, and he suddenly turns into a doting grandfather. Has he had any luck treating your gout? He has. He has done what he can. At my age, I thank Providence that I am delivered from worse affliction. You must take better care of yourself. Your home is a safe haven for learned men. It would be a shame if you had to close your doors due to ill health. Upon thy return from thy trek across North America, I expect that thee will frequent my saloon often, salon often. And speaking of thy voyage, Jefferson has entrusted me with secret information about the nature of thy mission. Indeed, he has asked me to counsel you for advice. I certainly applaud Jefferson's ambition, but I fear we are asking too much of thee. Not only must thou cross an entire continent, but without even a proper map to guide you. To know we must explore! Excelsior! Uh, let's cross that river when we get there. Yeah, I like that. That's a, is that a pun? That we're going to actually cross rivers, so... Let's go with the pun. Let's cross the river when we get there. Idle speculation only in dangerous fear. There is no need to invent danger in, in advance. We have studied the matter and prepared care thoroughly. 
I am ready to face this challenge. Nowhere will wisdom and prudence be more important than when thou dealest with the Indians. Well, some may be warlike, thou wilt find most of them reasonable men. Too many fools speak of conquering the Indians. What we need is friendship with them. I will be careful, Dr. Winstar. If they approach peacefully, I shall welcome them with open arms. But uh, any warlike tribes will rue the day they provoke us into a fight. Oh, really? Okay. Winstar sighs heavily. <sighs> I suppose that is the right approach. But as a Quaker, I can't help but think that all men are our friends. We must seek to forge lasting peace. Or we will des be des destined, we or we'll destine this continent to centuries of war and suffering. From upstairs, you hear the startling crash of pottery breaking. There is a moment of silence. Then you hear Elizabeth Winstar say, "Oh dear, that was his favorite." What in the blazes? Forgive me, Captain. It seems a, a matter upstairs requires my attention. Of course, Doctor. In the meantime, thou wilt find bread and cheese in my study. Please partake of it. Oh, and Dr. Barton should be arriving at any moment. If he does arrive, wilt thou kindly let him in? It would be my pleasure. Thanks. All right, Casper, eat some hors d'oeuvres. Um, you don't tell me twice. Oh, can I get can I just squeeze past you? I'm in front of the hors d'oeuvres table here. In your study, you say? Ah, yes. All right. Can we investigate your bone collection? You have a lot of bones, my friend. So we're headed here. It's already in the map. Oh, it's, it's like, it's just like the here there be dragons. It looks like Mexico is fully explored. How is Mexico explored, but not the, the Western United States already? I mean, I guess, I guess maybe the uh, conquistadors making maps, perhaps. I don't know. Take orders. One food. Wistar's table is quintessentially Quaker, simple, but laden with the finest foods available. He even has Cheshire cheese all the way from Connecticut. With the long voyage right around the corner, you don't know when you'll be able to taste good cheese. Maybe never again. You eat with gusto. <laughs> How do you eat with gusto? As you're filling your cheeks with cheese, God, you're like your cheeks with cheese, you hear a knock at the door. I can't jump. Good. Okay, I was gonna say if I could jump in this this game, that would be absolutely amazing. Benjamin, it's good to see you again, my friend. What's this? Has Dr. Winstar hired you as a butler? Dr. Winstar is presently fetching Dr. Rush. I consider it an honor to open the door for you. The debt I owe you for instruction you've given me in the natural arts is beyond my ability to repay. Dr. Barton is visibly flattered. Visibly flattered. Enough fighting, Captain Lewis. You are one of my most... My simper, you're not one of my simpering students. Am I not? I consider myself your most eager pupil. Eager, you say? Let us just find out how eager. Follow me into the garden if you would be so kind. I'll lead, I'll lead the way. Don't worry. Where are we going? Where are we going? Are we going for a smoke break? Alright, what do you got? As you can see, Dr. Wizardar has been busy gardening. His recent plants, several, he's recently planted several specimens of species you may be familiar with from long ago, but which you will soon be reunited. Your task is to perform a proper taxonomy of the plant. You will fulfill President Jefferson's mission during your voyage across the continent. Identifying new species must be second nature to you. I shall return shortly with my report. Okay, so we're going to identify some plants here. Observe unknown. Uh, what? Oh, we're going to draw it. Okay. Looks kind of like that. <laughs> That's great. Here's one. Looks kind of like that. Alright, yeah. Kind of looks like that. Here's one. Let's look at this. Looks kind of like... Kind of like this. I guess. Am I good at this? I'm good. It kind of looks like this. Kind of looks like this. Oh, yeah. It kind of looks like that. Uh, it kind of looks like this. No, it doesn't. Okay. Didn't actually get anything on that one. Now, this one kind of looks like this. There we go. So, we have to like find the rest of the pieces, basically. Morale increased to Dauntless. Well done, sweet William, a member of my coronation family, perennial, edible, and a staple of cultivated gardens since the 16th century. You have a keen mind for natural sciences. With a mentor like you, how could I help but learn? Your good breeding prompts you to heap undeserved praise upon me, but I have told you how jealous I am of you. 
On several occasions, Doctor. And every time I've told you that you would be most welcome on this journey, your botanical expertise would be invaluable. We both know I would only prove a hindrance, Captain. I am an academic. This adventure is meant for hardier men than I, alas. The best way for me to assist in this acquisition is to make sure I have imparted you with all the knowledge you need to succeed. I feel eminently well prepared for that lies ahead. Do you, Captain? Do you? We can test your preparation first with a few questions. Here's the first. The making of Meriwether Lewis. You are passing around the peace pipe with some New Indian friends. You take your first puff and discover the smoke tastes acrid and foul, perhaps even toxic. What do you do? Uh, duty requires a smoke on despite the personal risk. I offer my own tobacco as a replacement. I asked to see the plant where the filler came. Yeah, I'll do that. I, if I can study the plant from whence the filler came, perhaps I can make a determination as to whether it is safe to smoke. So I would ask for a sample. A smoking like a true naturalist on wood. Tut tut. You are investigating through a treacherous stretch of rapids. On the far bank, you see a bush that might be new to science. Getting to the bush not, will not only be dangerous, but will certainly delay your travels. What do you do? Ah, uh, well, we proceed on without it. There will be another bush. Uh, looks like we can get more science points to go that. I ask for volunteers to retrieve. I'm not going to do that. We're, we proceed on without it. We proceed on without it. No single bush is worth risking the lives of my men. Other, others will come later who may again, again gain the glory of discovery. And thus science is sacrificed in the name of prudence. Very well. Your last question. You and your men are starving. You will all be dead in days if you do not find food quickly. You have warned your men to not eat unfamiliar roots. But they are so hungry they dig up roots of an unknown species. Out, outwardly, they look edible. But many toxic roots do. Do you eat them? I eat them and monitor what happens to me. Oh, God. I study my books. I just, I just, I just curl up by the fire and study my books. Uh, I do not prevent anyone from eating. Oh, that'd be a bad idea. This is just a bad idea. I study no books. Knowledge here is the key. I would examine my books for several similar species and use my best judgment to determine if the roots are safe to eat. So, doctor, did I pass your test? To be honest, I haven't slightest idea. <laughs> okay, great. So what was the point of this exercise? Was the one exactly? To amuse me, mostly. But to illustrate the oftentimes best answer we can give is no more than an educated guess. I've given you the education. Now it's up to you to guess correctly. I will do my best, my dear mentor. Now I have you have you more tricks you wish to play on my on your gullible student? Not a one. Let us repair to the dining room for a drink, shall we? All this philosophizing makes me long for a nice glass of Mandria. Mandria. <laughs> I don't know what that word was. Repair to the dining room. All right. Tut tut. Onward. Onward. Ah, oh, doctor. Good evening, Captain. How are you? Do you mean in general, or are you asking in your capacity as a physician? I have little need to inquire after your health, my friend. You are one of the finest, fittest specimens I have ever seen. But even with the strongest men can die with surprising ease, the journey ahead will, will, of you will be fraught with peril. That I all know too well, but experience has taught me that the right combination of courage, courtesy, and Kentucky rifles will suffice to handle most any situation. Well said, Captain. May you ever remain so doughty in the face of danger. But I take my advice, and mindful of overconfidence, it is, forego it is a foregone conclusion that many of your men will die. Perhaps most. Perhaps all of you. Always remember, at least one of you must return in order for this adventure to be of any value to your country. You must choose discretion over valor every time. I will heed your advice. I will always... I will apply your advice as appropriate. I will heed your advice. I will heed your advice. You give wise counsel, Doctor. As always, I will do as you say. Do not mistake my meaning, Captain. I do not mean to tell you your business. There is a reason the President has chosen you for this mission and not someone like myself. I still have much to learn. You know more than you think, and I can prove it. I have almost certainly an insubordinate patient who is suffering through a nasty spell of gout. If you can treat a patient as cantankerous and disagreeable as he, there is no medical challenge you're not worthy to face. Oh, and who is this patient? I believe Dr. Rafash is referring to me. Another other... Treat Dr. Wistar's gout, Captain Lewis, and show us how much you know of medical arts. Alright, I'm gonna go click him <laughs> and treat his gout in front of everyone as a floor display. <laughs> oh my god, it's a, it's a, it's a puzzle. It's, it's, it's bejeweled. <laughs> Start by guessing the right medicine. 
rebuttal. The treat, Mr. Wisp. Start by guessing? It's just medicine's not really a science, is it? Red one looks good. A star means this model shares one trait. One color, row, or column with the correct medicine. What? <laughs> okay. So color, row, or column. So it's either something in this row, something in this row, or the right color. So let's try this first. Let's rule that out. So an X means the bottle has no traits in common. So we know it's not red. We know it's not in this column. So it can be this column still, any of these. And we know it's not this one. We know it's not this one. So we can rule out anything. And we can rule out this one. And we can rule out this one. And it has to be something either in this column or it has to be in this column. We narrowed it down that far. Okay. So we know it's going to be, I think the next bet would be yellow. So one match. Then we know it's in this column. So it's, then we have a 50 50 chance. So let's go this one. Wait a second here. Oh, there it is. That's why. We were matching the column, not the color there. Your parents are just feeling much relieved. Report back to her. I dig that puzzle. That's really unique. Benjamin, hello. Well done, Captain. Of what the fine hell? These voices are going to change every single time, guys. I'm just telling you right now. Every single time. Well done, Captain. <laughs> I'll just go over the top of it. What a fine field doctor you've become. Thanks wholly to your mentoring, Doctor. Aye, but it may all be for naught. The medical challenges before you may be too difficult for any man. It is true that if I may fail, uh, that is true that I may fail, but I am determined to succeed in this mission or perish in the attempt. Dr. Wistar nods in agreement with you. Dr. Rush smirks cynically. I am certain the soldiers under your command will find your words encouraging, Captain. But amongst ourselves, let us speak the truth. If some of you are going to return from the wilderness of Louisiana, you... Wait, oh, because Louisiana, Louisiana is everything in the, in the world right now. It's, it's the entire continent. Louisiana Purchase is Louisiana is all of it. It's not just Louisiana the state. That's it's a good point to remember. Uh, if some of you are to return from the wilderness of Louisiana, you must be absolutely mercenary in your calculations. If you can save the life of most of your men by sacrificing a few, you must do so. And without the slightest hesitation. Any sentimental devotion you have to preserving human life may cost you every man you have. Captain Lewis is well aware of the burdens of leadership. There is no need to lecture him. Oh? Let us see about that. Captain, suppose you one of your men suffers from a venereal disease and is complaining of severe burning sensation in his nether regions. The treatment is an ejection of mercury compound administered via the man's urethra. Or oh, the man is squeamish and attempts to refuse treatment. What do you do? Uh, it's mercury, so I'm not going to give it to him. I will not. <laughs> I just won't. Offers him some extra ration of whiskey. I'll reason with him. Yeah, that's not going to work. An extra ration of whiskey. Uh, yeah, I think I'll do that. I mean, we're just going <laughs> to... We're just going to inject mercury into your peener, dude. Don't worry about it. No problem. Just have some whiskey. <laughs> I would love... I would give him some spirits and see if that would not make him more amenable to treatment. That surely, that would surely work. I don't know, I, or I don't know a soldier's mind. Next question. One of your men is taken ill. You do not know, know why. You have let his blood. You have given purgat your purgatives, blood, perfury, and bark, and no avail. You cannot be long for this world, but he continues to linger. You have delayed your travels a week already treating him. What do you do? I stop injecting mercury into his penis. Let's start right there. Step one, click, done. Mercifully, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, he would not be long for the continuous linear. You've delayed your travels a week already treating him. I would, I would do my, my, my true option here. If I had a guy like that, I would leave one of my other soldiers with him and I would continue on with the rest of the team. And the other soldier, if he's in, in good health, I would let him continue on. I would ask him what he wants. But that, I mean, that's, I would consult with the man himself and ask him what his desire, then follow through with it in my utmost ability. Hmm. Interesting. Your final question. One of your men is gangrene on his left foot. It is spreading. The man begs you not to amputate. What do you do? Amputate. I would give the man whiskey. Apply my bone saw to the limb and amputate. And I would wager a year's pay you would do the same. To be perfectly honest, Captain, I do not know what I would do in this situation. Gangrene is malicious, capricious, and difficult to treat under the best of circumstances. What are you saying, doctor? Part of being a doctor, my friend, is knowing that despite your best efforts, you will make mistakes. Costly ones. Some may cost your patients their lives. 
But remember, those patients would have died anyway without you. Forgive yourself. I will try to do so, Dr. Rush. And speaking of saving lives, I would not dream of embarking on a voyage without at least 50 dozen of your famous pills. <laughs> your mercury lace laxatives are a wonder. <laughs> Come with the mercury. I will give them to my men for everything that ails them. God, this is like, oh God, that's so terrible. Everything? Mercury lace laxative for everyone. Of course, Captain. I will sure, you sure, will sure receive all you need. Fare you well. Return to us in, in good health. I will, Dr. Rush, until then. Okay, we have to talk to Casper Winstar. I have been eavesdropping on thy conversations with the doctors. They were quite telling. A character creation, facet choices. One leader, two soldier, three diplomat, three science. Okay, so we got three diplomat plus three science. Starting personalities, diplomat, science, bonus granted. Okay, we can purchase skills from the skill tree. Interesting. Thou art thoughtful, empathetic, skilled in language, a natural diplomat. I dare say the Indians will be falling over themselves to befriend thee. The, this, is the, this is the most popular girl at the ball. That's us. Thine intelligence, tolerance, and ambiguity for novel insights, but all guarantee, but all but guarantee thy success. I hope you're right, Doctor. I pray I'm up to the daunting challenge ahead of me. Doctors, it may be that I am ultimately ill in my mission, but if so, it will be through no fault of yours. You could do no more to prepare me, and so I would like to propose a toast. To the voyage of discovery, we will bring honor to Jefferson. <laughs> Hopefully not all of us will die. <laughs> Purge melancholy. I love the gallows humor here. Hopefully not all of us will die. <laughs> oh, so that, that gives, okay, I see. Our melancholy stops us from choosing certain things, so we can't choose the same thing all the time. That is interesting. Purging the melancholy reduced all the, that tension of those other choices. We could, uh, we could, we could redo those, the science now and that kind of thing. That's interesting. May at least a few of us survive, though we probably won't. Um, <laughs> oh, Meriwether Lewis. The most awkward man in America. Ah. Here, here. To your health, Captain Lewis. Now that I can drink to. Here, here. Here, here. Rubble, rubble. <laughs> Wait, rubble, rubble. Hamburglar just stepped in. Ah, the president's house. Washington. I mean, our social graces thus far have prepared us for this. Ah, Mr. Lewis, good morning. You were up early this morning, I noted. Yes, Mr. President. Dark thoughts at a dark hour. <laughs> Am I right? Strolled the hallways for a bit to clear my head. Too much like your father, I dare say. Cursed with melancholia. I am sorry for it. I am sorry to have disturbed your rest, Mr. President. Nonsense! I am a light sleeper by nature. In this house, we live like two mice in a church. Thank you, sir. But I am fit and ready to carry out whatever work you have for me. Excellent! It is of utmost importance that Congress receive this letter today. Let nothing prevent you from delivering it. I will carry it over immediately. Not immediately, if you please, sir. I want to ask you first if you have given more consideration to whom you would like to be your lieutenant on the voyage of discovery. Yes, sir, I would say, in fact, that I have come to the decision, assuming you agree, of course. To my mind, there is really only one man for the job. Well, do not keep me in suspense, sir, but sir, whom do you in mind? William Clark. He was a former commanding officer of mine and among the very finest soldiers to ever wear an American uniform. He is the fine outdoorsman and completely calm in the face of danger, and no man in America will command more respect from soldiers than or, or Indians. You say he was your former commanding officer. Are you sure you will be con con he will be consent condescend to being your subordinate? That is something I wish to discuss with you, sir. I do not wish to ask Mr. Clark to be my subordinate. I wish to ask him to be my co-captain. A look of distaste crosses Jefferson's face, but is soon replaced by an usual dispassionate smile. You wish to void the voyage of discovery to have two captains, then? Yes, sir. I know it is highly irregular. To say the least! The gall of it! I won't stand for it! And what if I differ on how to handle the situation? Whose opinion will carry the day? We will deliberate and come to an agreement. Mr. Clark is, an intelligent, and is intelligent and reasonable. I do not anticipate problems. I think it is a bad idea, Mr. Lewis. I am sure Mr. Clark is a fine officer, but you are the man I have specifically trained for the most important of missions. I would feel more comfortable if you had final say in all my decisions. Appeal to his boldness. Appeal to his respect for friendship. 
I, I don't need to appeal to his pessimism. <laughs> I just want to see what this choice is. But uh, I'm going to appeal to his boldness here. Boldness. Mostly because I don't use that choice very often. I can do the Molokali later to get rid of it. Sir, this is an adventure of the likes of which the world has never seen. The novelty of the situation constantly will require quick thinking and innovation. But if Mr. Clark does not hold equal rank with me, he may be more reluctant to speak his mind. Our dual command is prudent, sensible, and a conservative choice. Very well, Mr. Lewis. Against my intuition, I shall petition Congress to appoint Mr. Clark as a captain. Thank you, sir. I am sure Mr. Clark will accept the offer. And now what? I have to deliver a letter to Congress for you, right? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Is that what he looked like? I don't know. What's he on the dime? Right? I don't know. Quarter? And flashback. Okay, we're in, we're in uh, Lost right now. Good. 